So today we're going to be having a look at a motherboard from EVGA. So this is part of their refreshed series of X58 boards. So this is the X58 for the win. Three. And the three means a couple of things. We'll get into that a little bit more later. First of all, like I said, this is an X58 board. That means it supports all Intel Core i7 processors, both in the extreme and regular variety. So four cores, six cores, you name it. It uses the X58 Express chipset and is NVIDIA SLI as well as AMD Crossfire ready. On the back, we're going to find an outline of the various features that it includes, but uh, I actually don't need this list. I'm going to go ahead and figure that out as we go along because motherboards are not that difficult for me. I've done quite a few motherboard unboxings over the last little while, so uh, I like to think I know my way around a motherboard. I like to think, anyway. I could be wrong. It's happened before. It's happened a lot of times if you follow my videos. <laughs> um, Anyway, here we go. First thing we find when we open up the box is a little note from EVGA. EVGA says, please note if your product is not working properly, do not return to the store. EVGA offers direct customer service. You can call us here and that will be a good thing. Whoa, everything's spilling out. Hold on, I got it, I got it. Okay, so what we're gonna find inside in terms of accessories, we find a little X58 for the win three motherboard layout thingamajigger along with a quick start guide tells us how to install a graphics card how to install a cpu ram power supply all that good stuff covers the basics you got full color there oh yeah and it's even got sort of some more uh detailed stuff on the back so how to plug things into the back how to plug in your front uh case switches good stuff all right next we have an evga sticker EVGA three-way SLI sticker, cool. So I guess this board supports three-way SLI. That was easy. That's maybe that's part of the uh, for the win three. All right. Next we've got motherboard installation guide. So that's sort of a more book-shaped version of the other one we just looked at. All right. In terms of cables, we have got Molex to SATA power cables. We have six SATA data cables, and then we have an IDE cable. So from there, we can uh, presume that the board does support IDE. We also have a USB Firewire PCI back bracket. We have a three-way SLI bridge. We have a two-way SLI bridge. That's a floppy bridge. This is a PCB inflexible bridge. We have a IO cover. All right, and finally, we have a disc that you should throw away. Next, we have the motherboard itself, which looks, oh man, EVGA does such a great job of the aesthetics of their boards. Just phenomenal. Mm. Smells like fresh motherboard too. If you guys know what I'm talking about, please leave a comment under the video saying that you also appreciate the smell of fresh motherboard because it's very noticeable. Okay, why don't we start up here? We'll start at the top left. So first thing we've got is our eight pin CPU power connector. We have only one on this board, although that's not to say that the board can't provide a whole lot of juice to the CPU. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got what appears to be eight plus two phase power delivery to the CPU. And one of the things that I noticed right away about this board is that the CPU is located um, not quite in, not as much in the center, but very high up near the top edge of the board. So you're going to want to watch out if you have a top mounted power supply and a very large heat sink, you might actually get a little bit of interference going on there. So watch out for that. Although it does have quite a spacious area around the socket. So if you're installing a big cooler and you don't have something like right here above your board, you should be just fine. We've got support for six DDR3 DIMMs. So that's uh, triple channel memory up to 24 gigs. Lots and lots of memory supported by this particular board. Then we've got our 24 pin power connector in its ideal location along the right hand edge of the board. And moving down we have an IDE connector as well as here's another reason it's called three. That is a SATA three, six gigabit per second pair of ports. So there's two SATA three, six gig per second ports, and then six SATA two, three gigabit per second ports right there. Here we have a couple of, really are those USB? Wow, but they're red. Very strange. Okay, we have red USB headers. We have a South Bridge heatsink as well as a North Bridge heatsink, which is uh, looks like it's made up of a couple different components. So there's a bit of an underplate here that's using like a black anodized finish, and then we've got some nice big fins here that look like man, there's got to be some way to install a fan on there. But it looks like the board is passively cooled by default coming from EVGA. So I guess if it can run that way, then awesome. So much the better. We've got our front 
header connectors here for the power LEDs, all that good stuff. We got a couple fans, and I'll show you all the fans in a minute because it looks like this board supports a lot of fans. Next, we've got a clear CMOS button here, although there's another one on the back rendering this one pretty much useless. We also have integrated power and reset switches as well as lots of PCIe expansion slots. We've got a total of four PCIe slots, two PCI slots, so you can run up to three-way SLI, although if you do run three-way SLI and you're running dual slot cards, and if you're running three-way SLI, you better be running dual slot cards. If you're running three-way SLI with dual slot cards, you won't be able to install anything else. However, if you are running two-way SLI, then you will have access either to an additional PCIe 16X or a PCI or an additional PCI 16X and an additional PCI. So here we go, three PCIe 16X, two PCI, one PCIe 1X, although the odds of being able to access that one are pretty slim, given you probably have a dual slot graphics card here. Okay, what else is there to say about this? Let's look at the back, oh, I like this. You know what, it's little touches that some guys do right and some guys don't. On the back of the board, look at this, screws. Okay, these are spring-loaded screws mounting the Southbridge heatsink the Northbridge heatsink, which is up here, as well as the MOSFET heatsink. Nice little touch because we're not using cheapo push pins. We're using something that's going to stick, something that's going to last, and also something that can be easily removed if you want to take the whole thing off and mount a water block on it, say, for example, if you were into that sort of thing. Okay, so let's have a look at the back of the board where we are going to find the final three thing. That is USB 3.0. So we have two USB 3 ports. We have eight USB 2 ports, one PS2 keyboard port, a clear CMOS, uh, I'm at a loss for this one, so I'll be back in a second. Uh, and then we also have two gigabit Ethernet ports, one Firewire, as well as 7.1 audio. Sorry guys, that's the EV bot connector, so uh, sorry about that. Anyway, thank you for checking out the unboxing of the EVGA X58 for the win 3 from EVGA. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for lots more videos, unboxing motherboards and other awesome tech stuff.